Welcome back to Ask a Creationist. I'm Todd Wood. I'm a young age creationist. I'm here to answer your questions about evolution, creation, origins, the Bible, Genesis, science, faith, philosophy, whatever you got. I'm interested in hearing from you. Let me know what your questions are. This week, we are dealing with the ongoing question, is there evidence against evolution? Or as I like to phrase it, is there evidence inconsistent with or poorly explained by evolution? And this is basically the final episode in this series. So let's recap, shall we? Uh, I started this series because people were saying that I thought that all the evidence supported evolution and that there was nothing inconsistent at all and that creationism was just trying to come up with an answer and we were, you know, just trying to figure it out. And those people are incorrect, and here is why. So my journey in this series, we emphasized, first of all, that all models have anomalous data. Evolution is a model in science. All scientific models have anomalous data, things that are poorly explained or not explained. And so evolution has things that it doesn't explain very well. It just does. That's how it works. You can't, you can't have a perfect model. The first big one that I pointed out was this notion that the classification scheme is just far more complex than a nested hierarchy. So Darwin basically constructed his evolutionary argument on the, on the idea that the classification scheme looks like a genealogy, and it sort of does if you stand back and squint and don't look at the details. But when you get really up close, you realize, holy cow, this thing is like a bowl of spaghetti. And it doesn't, you know, does it fit evolution? It might. Evolution could be you know, change to fit it. But what does that then do to Darwin's original argument? And it certainly opens up the possibility that there are other and better explanations. I also noted that island biogeography, the thing that really clinched evolution in the mind of Darwin, is generally, and I mean generally, not always, but generally limited to examples of evolution that are limited, right? So things like, you know, unique genera, unique species, unique subspecies are on islands. Even though there are some islands that have been around for millions of years, you still have, or, you know, according to the conventional time scale, you still have very, very limited examples of, of evolutionary change, which I don't really have a problem with. But the question is, you know, does this, you, if we extrapolate, does that really explain everything? We look at macrobiogeography, the patterns of species across the planet. Things get really muddy and muddled, and sometimes we're in for really big surprises, things like the ratites. And I gave that example in the episodes. I suggest you go check that out. It's peculiar and weird, and I'm not sure what to think about it, but it doesn't really fit very well with the simple evolutionary explanation because things are always more complicated than they seem. I kind of, you know, bailed on the fossil record, it could have other explanations, but that's really more of a geological question, and I'm a biologist, and this is about evolution, and so it's kind of a cop-out, I know, sorry, but, you know, there it is. I'm going to leave that to more of a geological, a geological world than a biology world. And then I argued that unguided abiotic origin of life seems quite impossible from a chemical point of view. I stand by that pretty firmly, but this is really sort of the edge of evolution. It's really not... It's really not evolutionary biology proper. It's not what evolutionists think about and study. It's more of a chemistry problem. And so, you know, some people would say I'm cheating, including that. That's fine. I don't care. You still, if, if, you, if you're insisting on sort of a, a no-God meddling model, right? So perfectly naturalistic model where God does not interfere at all, then you still have, you can't get evolution even going. So how... So what kind of a model is that? And finally, on uh, the last episode, I argued that I, you know, from my perspective, altruism poses rather important explanatory difficulties for natural selection. It's really hard for me to imagine, and I think it's hard for a lot of biologists to imagine how in the world something so amazingly complex as a beehive could have originated simply by natural selection. Well, all right then. So that's my series, right? That's what I came up with. Those are my examples. Those are the things that I think really sort of stick out in my mind as being things that are anomalies and things that are, you know, just need more work in evolutionary biology. And some of you 
Both sides of the aisle, I might add, evolutionists and creationists, might be thinking, you know, is that all you got, right? Come on, there's way more, you know, the, the creationists would say, there's way more evidence against evolution. You could totally destroy it. And, and I'm quite dubious of that claim. Uh, and there are people on the other side saying, those, are, those aren't even important. Ugh, that's not important. And, you know, evolution's going to figure all those things out eventually. We got great you know, ideas, kin selection for altruism, and macrobiogeography just means that evolution is proceeding in a way that we thought was not right before, and now we know is really, you know, we're learning things, and we're, we're figuring it out, and it's not bad. So you got, you know, you got nothing, Wood. You're, you're puny. Go home. Well, no. Yeah, I don't think this is all, right? I don't think... This is everything, and frankly, I could go on and on. We could talk about the more ephemeral features of nature, things like beauty and the, the extraordinary way in which nature is amenable to our investigation. Frankly, I find it rather astonishing that human beings, just by applying themselves, have been able to figure out stuff. Why would we ever think that we should live in a universe where that's possible? I could go on and on, of course, about biochemistry and arguments from biochemistry. We could talk more about Behe's mousetrap and examples that might exist uh, in cells and genetics and so forth and the complexity argument and intelligent design, and I don't think it's all terrible. I think there's quite a lot of important things that need to be wrestled with in that area. And we could also talk about the extraordinary achievement of humanity, the human intellect, human artistic expression, ability, etc. This goes, I think, far beyond anything that evolution could really hope to produce. All right, well, why don't I just do that? Why don't we just continue with that? Well, let me tell you why. Big reason is evolution is basically as slippery as a meal. I've been around evolutionary biologists a lot. I uh, follow their work, been to their conferences, even worked with some, right? And they are really smart, and there are a lot of them. And they're really good at coming up with models and explanations. And with all the resources that they have at their disposal, and they're all, and I'm sure there are some of them scoffing at me going, it's really hard to get a grant, blah, blah, blah. Well, at least you have the possibility of getting a grant for what you do, unlike me. So don't even give me that crap. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah. With all of that ability, all of that resources, all of those resources, I have no doubt that evolution is going to come up with answers for altruism and classification and biogeography and the fossil record and so forth. Whatever anomalous data exists, I do not doubt that there is going to be an evolutionary biologist out there who's going to think up a, a, a reasonable model that people will go with, kind of like kin selection, right? So evolution is adaptable and powerful, and people like it. But I think there's a more important thing here about why I don't just go on and on and on about all the problems with evolution, and that is very simple. What I really need to be doing <laughs> is working on my own explanation, right? Science is about explaining data. That's what science is about. It's what scientists do. And if I'm going to say your model is terrible and it's got all these problems, the correct response to that is, fine, but what's your model? What do you propose instead? What's your explanation? And I know there are a lot of creationists, well, maybe not a lot, but there are some creationists who really don't like that response. They think it's perfectly fair to show how completely bankrupt a particular model is and that that's all we need to be about. And I just, I, I find that completely incorrect. Yeah, incorrect. Um, we've been doing it for decades now. Evolution is perhaps even more entrenched than it was. Evolutionists are even less impressed with the evidence and research that we've done. Yeah. So it just comes right back to this question for me. If you're so smart, what's your explanation? And if I want to make an impact on science and make an impact on scientist thinking, then I need to be doing more than just poking holes. I need to be doing the hard work of science, which is explaining the data, which is what Core Academy is all about. 
And that brings me back to Core Academy. So thanks for watching this episode. And if you've stuck through the whole series with me, thank you again. Wow, that, that's, that's dedication. Please visit us at coreside.org if you're interested in getting involved in this idea of developing my own model, our alternative creation model. That's what we're all about. You can visit us at coreside.org, find out ways you can be involved, including financially. So yes, I would be remiss if I didn't ask for donations. Please visit our website and uh, leave us a little something something. Uh, you can also, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, click the bell to receive notifications. If you didn't like this video, click the dislike button. Post, post on your social media about how outraged you are about it. You know, spread the word that I exist. That's fantastic. We love that. If you visit our website here, you will find links to our social media accounts where you can also, you know, post protesting things, but we might take it down. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm going to start a whole new thing next time. Probably not a series, but different questions altogether. And Evidence for Evolution is over. Finally, at last. Goodbye.